Okay, so this is Linux Mint 20 XFCE 64-bit, and it's running on my mid-2010 MacBook. Uh, and uh, if you want to know the explanation of why I got rid of Windows 10 and Mac OS, uh, and how to install this, I'll show on screen now the timestamp to go to. Uh, but before that, I thought I'd go through Linux Mint as an operating system, because I haven't seen it before. Uh, because it doesn't seem to be compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4. I do a lot of videos on Raspberry Pi 4s. And uh, so I figured I'd try this out. Okay, so if we go start off by clicking on the start menu, uh, and you can see here we've got things like favorites, recently used, all applications. Everything is nice and scrollable as well. I'm using the trackpad uh, with two fingers to scroll up and down, which, which works really well. So accessories, scroll up and scroll down, games. I put a couple of games on here. Uh, and this actually runs incredibly well. Now, it doesn't come with any of these uh, by default, but they were all installable from the App Store. So if I click on the App Store, so under System and Software Manager, I can get rid of this now. That just happens on start on initial startup. So you can see here, uh, the App Store comes up nice and fast. Uh, if I click on something like Games, everything moves around really nicely. Uh, and I can click through and everything is nice and responsive. Uh, and you can see there's various different emulators. I haven't tried Dolphin yet. Uh, whether it will work on this, as I say, this is a mid-2010 Mac, um, so it's pretty low specs. Uh, in fact, let's get that up on the screen and show you what sort of specs I'm running with. So you can see this looks different to my Mac, but mine is the white one. Uh, the mid-2010 is the, the white MacBook, but it's the same processor, 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo. Uh, it's got an NVIDIA GeForce 320M. I'm running it from a 256 SSD, so that was an upgrade, and also I'm running 8 gig of RAM as well. But as you can see, uh, scrolling and everything works really nicely. If I was to go into something like YouTube, and search for my channel and show a bit of this Stadia video because I've been using this to show uh, if things are running smoothly and go to around about here maybe I think that's actually spot on because right? that's a video yeah, 10A screen capture perfect so if I go down to HD yeah we're on 1080 and full screen as you can see, it looks rather nice. That will start moving around a bit in a minute. And if I do stats for nerds, there you go. You can see here that it doesn't seem to be dropping frames now, and it seems to be nice and smooth. Right, so let's quit out of that. Let's just, actually, let's go back to my channel. If you're interested in this, uh, what this MacBook is, so if I do mid-2010, I've done a load of videos on this MacBook. Uh, I was running uh, Mac OS on it. I was running Windows 10 on it. I've tried Raspberry Pi OS on it. Um, and there's various different things about it. And also uh, opening it up and showing you the insides and things like that are in those videos. So if you want to have a look more at that, if you want a very cheap uh, MacBook that runs all sorts of things uh, and very compatible, I paid, back in 2014, I paid £266 for this MacBook. Right, so let's do my usual UK deals. I've been amazed at how well this runs. It, it actually is really pleasant to use. And as an OS, it's, it's very logical. I can definitely see myself using this. So BBC website, you can see, uh, again, I'm using two fingers on the trackpad. And... What's really nice about this as well, uh, and this I never could get this to work with Windows 10, this properly supports my trackpad. So if I tap with two fingers, that works like a right click. Um, but also if I go into settings, and if I type in mouse, mouse and touchpad, there was one setting I found on here, uh, which is this one, which I wish Windows 10 had on this Mac, uh, and it's tap touchpad to click. Uh, and so rather than have to do a physical click, you know, one of these where you push down the button click, you just literally lightly tap it like you would on a tablet and, uh, and it selects. And you can see two finger scrolling uh, is, uh, is enabled. That was enabled by default. So accessories, 
what have we got installed in here? Calculator, Catfish File Search, uh, Disks, GNote for Notes, Image Viewer, Through now File Manager. USB Image Writer was nice to see on there and also USB Stick Formatter. I have put Raspberry Pi Imager on there because it's one that I use, but it was nice to see this came pre-installed. Uh, so again, I'll look at the games in a minute. Document Scanner and Drawing and Pics for organizing your images. Internet, so it came with Firefox and, and Firefox works very well on this, but I also installed Google Chrome. Multimedia, Celluloid, I'll use a bit of that in a minute. Uh, rhythm box for audio. So Office, it uses the LibreOffice suite, and you can see there's a dictionary on there as well. So settings, things like appearance. I haven't really played around with that much yet because there's something else I want to do. Oh, Compiz config settings. That's all those effects that Phoenix OS uses. I liked, I liked those. That was that was interesting. I might go back into that. Customize the panel. I mean, there is there is an awful lot on here, but it is a really nice fast operating system. I don't know how much space I've got. So if I do that, will that tell me? Yes, 194.3 gig. So it also works perfectly with my network. So if I click on network, WD My Cloud, and connect, you can see that comes up. So if I hit public, this is what it does in Twister OS. Uh, so it's obviously using the same file, I'm guessing it's using the same file manager as Twister OS. So if I hit cancel on that, I can now click on this one because that's appeared. Uh, and I can go into my work folder, my memory stick, because I've got some demos on here. Uh, so 1080 plays perfectly. Okay, so I can't play too much of that, obviously, um, but 1080 plays perfectly well on it. Uh, it even it even tries to play 4K. Uh, and the interesting thing about this is that Windows 10 and Mac OS don't play 1080 well on this particular MacBook. Uh, I'm going out through my Acer monitor, which is a 1080 monitor. The MacBook is only 768. But yeah, it's never really played 1080 well. Uh, so let's go back and go into 4K and just play a little bit of this. So you can hear the music start. So the music seems to play all right, but the video, uh, it does struggle with. And if I go full screen, just to show you, it's, it's really high res. It's a, a 60 FPS 4K content, really, really nice HDR content. But as you can see, it struggles with it, which is understandable. You know, this is a very old MacBook. So if we go down to the bottom, you can see we've got things like notifications, Bluetooth, uh, something needs my attention uh, and I think it was to do with drivers and I have had a few crashes with this um, and I don't know if it's because I'm outputting to my 1080 monitor uh, because when it was working just on the MacBook uh, it seemed to be fine but I've moved over to the 1080 monitor um, basically because uh, then I can screen capture. It did find some drivers for uh, sound card and video. I applied them before and uh, I couldn't get it to reboot so I've actually reinstalled this. So there's an update manager here as well. That's my ethernet connection, uh, battery, volume, and clock. So I tried stunt rally earlier on, which didn't work. Let's try trigger rally and see if that boots. Now, if it doesn't, it might be because the proper NVIDIA drivers aren't installed. And so that would probably help, but I don't know if it's the audio drivers or the NVIDIA drivers that caused it to crash. It looks like this might have crashed as well. Okay, so Trigger Rally and Stunt Rally, both of them crash uh, and don't start up for some reason. It may be to do with the graphic card drivers. Right, so let's explain why I deleted Windows 10 and Mac OS. Uh, so if I go into Google Chrome and I go to Twister OS. Twister OS, in my mind, is the best OS on Raspberry Pi 4. I use it as my main operating system on Pi. Uh, so if I click on Download, you'll see that this new bit got added. Twister Spins. So I clicked on it. So it's designed for uh, x86 computers, so more traditional laptops and, and desktops running Windows or Mac OS or anything like that. So uh, you can see here there's a way of installing it, but you need to add it on to Linux Mint or, or Zubuntu. So to install it, you need to download the 64-bit version of Linux Mint XFCE or Zubuntu. So I downloaded Linux Mint XFCE, 
uh, to be able to add Twister OS at a later date. So let's click on that and uh, go into download links. So I clicked on the XFCE version, which is the one I'm running here. That downloaded about two gig, I think it was. And I actually used Belena Etcher to write it to a 32 gig SSD drive. And I'll show you what happens when you boot up from that SSD drive. Okay, so here's my mid-2010 MacBook. So I've already written the operating system with Belena Etcher to this 32 gig SSD drive. Uh, press and hold Alt uh, and switch the power on. Alt means that it goes into a boot menu on a Mac, uh, which enables you to run an operating system from a USB stick or, or another drive or switch between operating systems. And it did show up as Mac OS and Windows. So I picked the USB drive, which would always be orange in this case, hit enter, and you can see it gives you a few options on screen. If I do this, it'll probably be clearer. So start Linux Mint 20 XFCE. So click on that. So at the moment, it's not running from the internal hard drive on the MacBook. It is running the whole operating system from here. And I used to do this years ago uh, with CDs. Uh, I used to use Linux CDs. Uh, Nopix was one I used to use a lot. And it would run the whole operating system from the CD. So you put it in a Windows computer and it would boot up and it would work. And you could use a bit of Linux. You could play around with it and try it out. So I got to this stage, it booted up, and it actually boots up quite quickly, considering this is a USB 2 MacBook, because it's too old to be USB 3. The operating system booted up and, and worked fine. I can move that out of the way now. Uh, so you can use it as an operating system as is. Uh, so if I go into, say for instance, Firefox, and I probably should have left it at this, but then I did want to try Twister OS on this MacBook, so uh, I have to go through this process to get to it. So you can see that's come up, and if I do BBC, it's pretty quick, it's pretty snappy. So quite impressed with that really. Uh, so I then thought, oh, okay, I'll, I'll install it. So I double clicked on the CD icon on the desktop. And so I went through the process of selecting the language, the keyboard and all of that sort of stuff, and everything went nice and smoothly. And it has Macintosh as an option for the keyboard. I installed all the multimedia codecs. So I picked an install Linux Mint option. I, it would be different from this because I was running Mac OS at the time, but it came up with another screen that said uh, something like no operating systems detected. So I hit continue and then it started to install. It didn't give me an option to, and I'm not complaining about this, uh, and I'm not, I'm not bitter about it because uh, I, I'm thinking of putting a bigger hard drive in this MacBook anyway, so, and I've got it backed up with Time Machine, so it should be fairly, fairly easy to reinstall Mac OS, although Windows 10 is a bit of a nightmare installing onto this. Uh, if you go back through my videos on the Mac, uh, it, I had to go Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, and Windows 10, upgrading it all the way, but actually it worked fine, and I use it in a lot of my uh, Windows WOR videos, and I've done videos with it, with it running Windows 10 as well. Um, so yeah, so I clicked on it, and uh, and it went forward with the install, but at no point did it offer me any other hard disk. So I thought, oh, it uh, it doesn't detect the other hard disk because of the way that it booted up and you select it. But actually, it just wiped out Windows and Mac OS. So that's that's how I got to this stage. Anyway, next video uh, or a future video is going to be running Twister OS on this MacBook, uh, and I'm going to have a look and see how that goes. Anyway, I hope you like this. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.